Hello and welcome to Brand On Demand, Brand the Demand. only podcast dedicated to creative entrepreneurs and helping them grow their brands with your host, Brand Guy Mikey. Okay, this one says, um, how has it been working with a female boss? Have you ever had a female boss? Yes, I have. How has it been working with a female <laughs> boss? Like I said, these are random questions. They might not make sense, but they are random questions. <laughs> I feel like somebody deliberately asked me to ask that <laughs> question. Uh, yeah. All right. I would say that mm. for me, the most progress I've had in my career has yeah. been when I worked with a female boss. Right. The person who has had the most impact on my career in the last couple of years has mm-hmm. been the boss I used to work with who was a female. Right. And I think that naturally I was somebody who was raised by my mother and my grandmother to a large extent. Right. So I have a lot of respect for women. Right. They tend to be the way that they were the strongest people I saw around me growing up. Mm. So unlike I think the typical cultural traditional male perspective where you see the female as weak, I've always seen them as stronger exactly. personalities. They're able to tolerate a lot more than we can. Yeah. For me, I think that if women give you a chance, mm. women are more empathetic and sympathetic to a lot of things. And my boss in particular had this perspective that even she as a woman who is disadvantaged because you know as a woman you have to prove that you're as smart as men exactly. you're already starting from behind the finish line in order to get the kind of respect so she does not understand why you as a man who doesn't have those disadvantages is not doing twice as much as exactly, she should yeah. so she constantly would push me and i think the one thing that i appreciated about her was that she created an environment where i could argue with her okay if i had a different opinion she would argue with me and I would lose, and she would tell me why <laughs> I lost. But in that process, I learned a lot, yeah. and she never took it as you're being disrespectful or you're arrogant, right. as opposed to the times I work with men where it becomes this whole ego battle. Mm-hmm. For her, it was more like, I don't know, the motherly touch was there, yeah. but then also that I have extremely high expectations of you, and yeah. you're not allowed to hold yourself to lower standards. Exactly. And I, I attribute the whole fact that I was able to transition into my current role to her. She used to tease me and call me local champion. Okay. okay. And the reason for this was that she always used to say that out there in the more diverse and global world, mm. as a young Ghanaian or young African, you have to do twice as much to earn half the respect. Exactly. So if you are here in a local space and you're thinking that you're already good, yeah. then all you are is a local champion yeah. because in the one in the land of the blind mm. the one eyed man is king that's what she said yeah. so because of that i always held myself to more global standards mm. so you act local but you think global exactly. and in that process i was able to transition so i thoroughly enjoyed my time working with a female boss wow. i can't say that for every female boss mm. but at least that the last one i worked for was a really great experience that was a great answer actually <laughs> That was a good answer. That was, I had to dig deep for that I one. know, right? <laughs> okay, moving on to the next one. Moving on to the next I think I think the thicker, the thicker sheets have the, <laughs> the most. Uh, oh, you have three questions, actually. Oh, I, I see. Yeah. I thought that was it. Oh, no, no, no. We're just, we just getting wow. started. This juice will finish early. <sighs> okay, so as a role model uh, yourself, what advice would you give to young people coming up, watching you today? Uh, what What's that one advice, single advice that you give to someone watching us today? Well, Above of, all the advice <laughs> that you give. <laughs> That's a difficult one. Okay. <laughs> I think my single piece of advice mm. would be this line that I've always kept in my mind. Right. That life is unfair. Mm. But sometimes it's unfair in your favor. Okay. So you can't complain when it's unfair in someone else's favor. Right. There's so many things that we can't control. Yep. You can't control how smart you are. There's always somebody who's going to be smarter than you. Exactly. Better looking than you, from a better family, mm-hmm. with a better upbringing. Mm-hmm. Those are not things within your control. What you can control is how much work and effort you put into it. Right. So aim to outwork everyone. Right. You need to be so good that people can't ignore you. Mm. Right. And when you get to the point where people can't 
attack your work mm. so they start attacking you mm. look at his hair mm. you can, that's when you realize that now your work is yeah, at that level exactly where people cannot fault it mm. so my my advice would be that life will tend to be unfair in your favor at some point and unfair in someone else's favor. You can't complain when it's unfair in someone else's favor. You just need to make sure that you're preparing yourself for when it's time for it to be unfair in your favor so that you meet that opportunity and then you achieve what your goal is. So that yeah. would be my advice. And I'm already then, sweating. Oh, no, no, don't sweat. Don't sweat, don't sweat, don't sweat, don't sweat, don't sweat. Okay, uh, what would you do if you were president? Wow. In this time of, you know, pandemic and everything, what would you do if you were president? In this time of pandemic, I don't think... The question is, what would you change if you were president? What would I change if I yes, were president? In Ghana. I really do try to avoid any kind of political... political? Discuss- <laughs> not, not at all. Mm. In fact, I feel bad that I'm not political because mm. my friend would tell me I'm part of the problem in Ghana. In fact, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not political. Yeah. But I think that just from my point of view, mm. the one thing I've always been passionate about is education. Right. In the sense that I feel that because of the way we are educated, yep. sometimes we come out of school or we go through school feeling like, one, we're either not smart okay. or whatever, just because it's basically a set of questions that you answer and your ability to imbibe knowledge and reproduce it mm. is really what is determined as what is intelligent or not. Yeah. So because of my own story, I went through school thinking I was an average student, mm. I was just okay. And it was after I div- I came out of I came out of school and realized that there are a lot of people who are autodidacts and can learn in different ways. Mm. So I realized that I learn better with multimedia. Mm. So if you give me an educational cur- curriculum where I have to watch YouTube a little, read a little bit of text mm. that's practical, I am able to excel even more yeah right when we were growing up if people had known that there was something like having a career as a youtube yeah. a youtuber mm. i think that there's a lot of things that they would have done differently yeah i think that our educational system doesn't give us enough room to explore and limits us to this narrow definition of what a smart child or an intelligent exactly. child is mm. and so a lot of us grow up thinking that we are average we're not we're not that much yeah. they're not all that mm. So if I were president, one thing I change is to bring a lot more variety into the educational system. Give yeah. people a chance to explore their creativity. You could be sitting here, and for all you know, you would have been a world class sefer. Mm. But <laughs> if you told your mother that's what yeah. you wanted to mm. do in Ghana, it would yeah, it would be a, <laughs> exactly. So I think that's the one thing I'd want to change: to bring a lot more diversity into education, to give people a chance to explore their creativity, and know that they can compete on a world class stage. Mm. That's, that's interesting to know. I think we should do your final question. But uh, this question is going to be for Toastmasters. All right. Final question. <laughs> <laughs> I like the look on your face. <laughs> Let me see one that uh, is at the bottom. Question. Okay. All right. All right, all right, all right. Hmm. <clears throat> okay. This one says, what is your deepest fear? Hmm. I like the way you say, hmm, your deepest fear. I think I would liken this to mm. what keeps me up at night. Okay. I think the biggest thing that keeps me up at night, and it's so it's such a coincidence that you talk about it, because even last night I was thinking about this. Mm. I don't advise that people worry about it as much, but it's something that I always find myself worrying about. Right. And it's whether I'm doing everything today to set myself up for success in the future right. or to set my future up for success in the future, mm. my, my family up for success in the future. Yeah. I really am afraid that one day I will wake up and say those words, had I known. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm constantly plagued with this whole thing that are you, <laughs> are you doing enough? Are you, yeah. are you, are you being lazy? You look like you're busy, but yeah. are you being productive? Mm-hmm. Are there decisions and choices you're making today going to be something that your future self will take you for yeah. i think those are the kind of things that i'm always thinking about so it's like managing your future brand now yeah right will you look back at the brand that you created mm. and be happy about it i think that is one of the biggest fear that i'll wake up one day and say it's, your brand on demand. it's my brand on demand <laughs> <laughs> it's my brand on demand yeah. exactly exactly i think that's what my deepest fear would be at this time wow wow i wow, mean that's wow. apart from snakes and and, and I don't like crawling creatures at all. <laughs> at all. 
<laughs> at all. I see. That's that's very interesting. All right, yeah. guys. So uh, this has been the short uh, segment where we ask random questions about anything, you know, and, and everything. Uh, this has been brand on demand. We have been discussing personal and professional development with Toastmasters in Ghana, and I've had an exciting time. You know, uh, I don't know about you guys, but I think this episode was made for me. I've learned so much from uh, Toastmaster Jeremy right here. You guys can go check out his YouTube channel, I'm going to throw that right here. Uh, go check it out, subscribe. If you have any further questions, make sure you go into his comment section drop all of those questions in there and i'm sure he's going to answer all of your questions uh where else can we find you on social media so i'm on linkedin all with right. the same name jeremy mm -hmm. i think that is where my professional channel is and i'm also on instagram at saint underscore remy underscore i think you can throw that in i'll there. throw that right yeah. here and on facebook jeremy quino as well mm -hmm. i don't really have much of a twitter presence though you probably have to teach me how to grow that I, th I think you should <laughs> i think you should because twitter is all about you know yeah. yeah so i think i think i think that's great um okay guys so yeah there you have it um personal and professional uh, development with toastmasters if you're looking for an avenue to grow yourself you've you've attended a lot of seminars conferences in the past and you're not seeing results i think uh, now you should take it up a notch um, make sure you look into what toastmasters are if you haven't heard of it and uh, it's going to be um, a great you know opportunity for you to um, kind of grow yourself grow your professional brand and you know put your brand on demand like i always say right here on this channel so yes if you haven't heard of it go check it out go to youtube try and do a lot of when i want to join anything i try and gather all the information i need about the thing before i take that bold step because it's going to cause a change an erratic change in your life you know you're going you're not going to be able to do all the things that you routinely do you know in your normal course of life it's going to really alter some of the things you do so make sure you find all the information you need on toastmasters in ghana before you jump you know on there and i can say that from here i'm going there i'm going to join there so the next time you see me you call me tm mikey <laughs> <laughs> tm mikey right here so yeah um Jeremy, thank you so much for joining us. It, it has been pleasure. an amazing discussion with you. And I, I'm sure this is not going to be the last uh, discussion uh, having you on this platform right here. And before you go, um, final words, anything you want to share. If you have any questions for me as well, because it's not like an interview, you know, you can also ask me some questions and then I can I'll feel like you. I'm also a guest on someone else's show. Yeah, so ask me some few questions and then we could wrap it up. You tell us uh, your final words and then... We jump on to the next episode sure i think <laughs> my final words would be that i mm. i thoroughly enjoyed myself yeah. i really enjoyed the discussion mm. and i'm very impressed with the initiative that you set up and thoroughly impressed with the fact that a lot of the things that you're doing are individual by yeah. yourself <laughs> and it's, it's really inspiring for yeah. me thank you so much also for you know spending time with me um taking time out of your busy schedule to you know spend some time with me and then with my audience as well right here on brand on demand brand on demand is a platform where we kind of um try to push the boundaries mm. of self-development to push the boundaries of entrepreneurship because i feel like right here on this side of the world right if you're an entrepreneur you're on your own Mm. nobody cares about you that much unless of course people think okay they can buy something of you they can buy something of you right so it's kind of sometimes you know um very difficult for young people to start anything you know on their mm. own because you have to be able to push it from zero ground zero to a point where people start appreciating it and yeah. that is the is the hardest part of the journey you know exactly so i think uh this platform was created to help kind of close the gap a bit you know if not at all mm. uh, close the gap a bit and then share some you know exciting insights with young people who want to start something out of nothing exactly so yeah exactly. this is brand on demand uh, we are glad that you are now part of the brand <laughs> Happy and to i'm be looking here. forward to doing more things you know in the future going forward 100 percent. all right all right guys so yes uh if you guys uh enjoyed this as well make sure you let me know down in the comment section uh if you have any questions for me on brand on demand drop them if you have any um product if you have any brand idea that you want to share with me 
share with me down in the comment section i'll be glad to look into it and i'll be if you if you're an entrepreneur a young entrepreneur that you want some shout outs on this channel link up to me uh i'll definitely throw that in there big shout outs going out to spicy girl uh episode sponsor big shout outs going out to pyramid pyramid is an online branding agency where you can you know go in for your logos flyers stickers if you want any animation you can go on there pyramid on to the next episode I'll see you guys on the next one. <laughs> Hello and welcome, welcome to Brand <laughs> On Demand. <laughs> the only podcast the brand dedicated guy to creating uh, entrepreneurs and helping them okay, grow okay, their okay, brands. Okay, okay. With your host, Brand Guy Mikey. <laughs>